Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of From What I Gather, where today I'm going to again be working with the fresh perch we caught the other day, and we're going to put together a nice ceviche that I think everybody's going to love. So let's get started. Here's our ingredients. Aside from our fresh perch, we've got all kind of citrus, uh, some avocado, some onion, some peppers, and I got some cilantro and tomato over here. This is, if you know how to make pico de gallo, you know how to make a basic ceviche. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get some of my juice, our marinade, if you will. So I'm gonna just juice some of this citrus. Now when I'm making ceviche, I like to use a 50-50 mix of lemons and limes. So it just keeps it nice and easy. So I think we'll, yeah. At least we'll probably use three of each for this. These are roughly the same size, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it'll all make sense in the end. Like, I'll just throw in one of these giant lemons too. And that'll be fine. All right. So we'll get our lemoner. We start knocking the juice out of these guys. And the amount of juice you want to get depends, on, of course, the amount of fish. I just want to collect enough citrus juice, mostly the lemon, well, I want to collect enough lemon and lime juice to cover the fish. It doesn't have to be completely submerged, but it all has to be making contact with the citrus because that's what is in effect going to cook it. It's not technically cooked because there's no heat, but it's going to kill, it's going to kill any bacteria that might be lurking around in there. There are some parasites that you'll need to look out for around here at least, and I'll talk about those when I get the fish out. So I'm just going to mash all these in here. Looking pretty good. It smells great. Well, that one's a bit too big, I think. Cool. Okay. That gave me one cup of juice. I think that'll work out just fine. So, I'm going to move on to the fish. These are the fresh perch that we caught the other day. They're not, they have been frozen, and that is because there are some parasites that can survive this process, and uh, they get pretty nasty when they're in people. So, the recommended treatment is to freeze your fish caught in the, in the ocean here for three days in a regular freezer and I believe one day in a sub-zero and that takes care of those parasites. So these have actually been in my freezer for five days. They should still be nice and fresh tasting. And I just trim anything that looks a little dark or fatty. All right, so now I'm gonna cut these perch into small strips. You can do larger strips, you can do cubes. These are smaller strips because I want this to be ready pretty quickly. This is great with all the white meated ocean fish, salmon also. I mean, probably trout out. Probably freshwater white meated fish is great too. Well, I know tilapia works with this. But I, my personal favorite would be rockfish. Pacific rockfish. Lean cods. Oh boy, that's some good stuff. So I probably have three quarters of a pound of perch here. And I'm just gonna knock that into these little strips. 
These are where you got uh, two inches long. The perch is probably less than a quarter inch thick. And I'll put these in my mixing bowl. You want to use a glass bowl here. Glass or plastic even, but let's stay away from the metal because the acid from that juice can have a reaction. A real undesirable reaction, if you know what I mean. Okay, so, got our fish. There's a little piece of skin right there. We'll need that, it'll be chewy. Fish is ready. I'll go ahead and salt that. Light coating of salt on there. We'll be able to taste it later. <laughs> then, to get that started, I'm just going to go ahead and take my citrus juice and add enough to let all that fish make some contact with it. Just going to push it down in there. Like I said it does not have to be completely submerged in that acid and it'll start changing color almost immediately going from that opaque to you can see some of the edges maybe already starting to turn white and that's the quote unquote cooking action but now that that's actually going you can get creative with what you want in there I want a little sweetness so I'm gonna go ahead and put in half an orange juice in you can really see it turning white now I mean, it's changing really quickly a lot of people leave this go for hours and hours but it's really 15 minutes 30 minutes it's gonna be excellent all right now let's get some other flavorings I want heat I want onion Any kind of onion will work here. I'm just using this red onion for the color. I mean, and the flavor, of course, but the flavor of any onion will work here. I just want this to look real pretty. I'm gonna make very fine dice, so some very thin strips, and then I'm just gonna work around them. Real fine diced onion. Goes right in there. We'll do not very much pepper. If I was the only one eating this, I'd get pretty crazy with it, but I am not, so I'll be kind. And I'll even take out the seeds and that white pith. That's pretty hot too. This is a serrano. Pretty warm. Hotter than a jalapeno, not as hot as a habanero. Either of those peppers, really good in here too. Extra fine dice on the serrano. We'll make it so it's not so hot. tomatoes, Roma tomatoes. I like to use these here because they're a little bit more firm, albeit less sweet. So, but you use what you like in here. I actually like to gut these out. Mostly just scoop that, scoop that seed and all that juice out of there so I don't get too much water in my ceviche. these into small cubes. Ingredient in this 
City K. The cilantro. I added all those vegetables, so I'm gonna need another pinch of salt here. I have probably added a teaspoon of salt total to this. Okay, so that press everything down to the juice. I am going to cover that, put it in the fridge for about 15 minutes, and then we'll try it out. Uh, avocado. Avocado traditionally goes in here. I don't care for the texture of the avocado after it's sat in the acid for a while, so I'm going to add it at the last minute, but we're still going to get it in there because it is great. Alright, another ceviche here. One of my favorites. I'm going to make a little bay scallop ceviche. I've got a half pound of bay scallop. Season those with a little salt. Use the lemon and lime juice to coat. Plenty. Now I'm again gonna add the orange juice because I like it. Now I've got red onion again. These are some red jalapeno. It's going to look real nice in there. And let's mix this up a little and go with some mango. down in that juice. Alright, again, put that in the fridge 15-20 minutes and we're gonna be ready to go. And here we go. It's been in the refrigerator for just about 30 minutes, maybe just under. You can see how nice the perch is clearly gone. Pretty white, definitely ready to go. These scallops are not so much. They're good like this, they can go a little longer but they're definitely done. So let's put this together. While these guys were in the refrigerator, I took a minute and cooked up some nice tostadas. That's one nice way to eat these. You can just serve these up with some tortilla chips. Eat it straight, I don't care. So on this, I'm gonna go ahead and not get too much of the liquor down there. I don't want to soak my tostada. I'm going to go ahead and do the perch on one side. Come in with that bay scallop and mango on the other. Very nice. Now, like a little drizzle of the little sauce. And that avocado we're talking about. Like I said, most of the time the avocado is just in it, whipped into there, like mixed in with everything else. But I just it's not, I don't like the the wet avocado texture, I guess. I prefer to put it on fresh like this, but I recommend you try it. Either way, stick with what you like. So there it is. Fresh ceviche, perch ceviche, base scallop ceviche, tostada.